Instagram up. Uh, yeah, so um, if you guys do have any questions, um, we just sent out a newsletter yesterday kind of talking about what to expect when we do reopen. Um, so plan for reopening is this Tuesday. So it's super um, important that we have you guys pre-register. Um, spots are limited, so just make sure that you pre-register. Um, and if you forget, we're going to have a little um, sign set up out front of the Mystic Doors. You can actually take your camera out and scan the QR code and you will be signed up for the upcoming class. Um, but I highly recommend doing it before you come out just in case spots do get filled up. Um, and it's so exciting to have uh, that opportunity to get you guys back in the studio. Um, yeah, so just pre-register, super important. Um, if you're you know, feeling any symptoms, please stay home, get, get better, stay safe. Um, and we're still taking donations on our Venmo account, but again, in no way is it necessary. You guys know the drill. I'm sure you've heard me spe spiel a hundred times on the live stream. Um, and my name's Kelly. <laughs> so thank you all for being here. I really appreciate seeing all your smiling faces. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Right. So come into a comfortable position. Uh, whoever hasn't been out here for an actual victory field class, a lot of the times I'm actually going to have my attention turns uh, this way. But if you have any questions or anything, just shout me out and I'll turn around and talk to you guys. All right. <clears throat> so come into a comfortable position if you want to stay seated or laying down. Good morning, all of my people who are joining us live this morning on Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you do choose to access this class at a later time for your convenience, you can find it on our Facebook page and also um, archived on our YouTube. And we usually do that like a couple hours after it's filmed. Close your eyes. Maybe move the body in a couple motions before you really feel yourself kind of settle into a comfortable position. Whether you're seated or laying down, trying to have a nice flat back. And just the same way that wind kind of comes over you, take a big breath. And let it go. And that wind almost feels like uh, it's welcoming us in this space. Giving yourself a chance to just notice all of the subtle noises. Maybe the feeling of your body pressing up against the earth. And when we bring our practice outside and practice on the physical earth, we are starting this process of grounding. Let your breath continue to flow here. Inhale, starting at the lowermost belly and rising. Each exhale is softening and just handing over any tension you're still dealing with. Take five more breaths in and out here. Connect to the silence being held within all the sounds. And as your breath expands, slowly start to bring some gentle movements into the toes and fingers. And notice how once we kind of start to incorporate some movement, the mind might want to move on to an interesting thought and just trying to maintain presence throughout your movement if you're laying down maybe taking a full body stretch if you're seated maybe just reaching those arms up overhead and rolling the wrists if you're laying down maybe you pull those knees into the chest if you're seated maybe you just open your arms into a big t and then give yourself a big wrapping the arms around the opposite shoulder. If you are laying down, 
Take your time to slowly join us in a seated position. Take your time to arrive. And if a seated position is a little taxing for your hips, consider placing a block underneath the sacrum. Let's bring our hands to heart center, either palms touching or bringing the palms on chest. And I'd like to take this moment to just show immense gratitude for this opportunity to have you guys with Mystic this morning. And throughout the last few months, me and Amy have come to realize that Mystic is more than four walls. It's more than just a studio where you enter and exit. Mystic is us, it's this community, and we can take it wherever we want. And your support has proven that to us. And it has kept us going throughout these last couple of months. So just taking that moment to show my gratitude for you all. We'll begin our class with the sound of Om, starting with a cleansing breath to prepare. Breathe in and out. And for Om, inhale. Oh. Have a beautiful practice, everyone. With the inhale, circle, sweep those arms up to the sky. Find a nice full stretch start to rotate at the wrist a couple times. You can open and close the palms, just preparing our wrists for some weight bearing. And you guys will notice that when we do yoga on a little bit of a softer surface, it can be a little taxing on the wrist. So at any point you need to kind of come off of them and give them a little shake, you can always do that. Incorporating some shoulder circles here by just rolling the shoulders up and away from the ears, maybe one at a time or maybe both together whatever is calling your name. And then taking it in the opposite direction. So we're getting a little bit of opening through the upper back, the chest, shoulders. <sighs> Bringing the arms up overhead with the inhale. And then with the exhale, twisting over to the right. So letting left arm drop to the front, right arm to the back. Inhale, coming back up to center, grow nice and tall. And exhale, twist over to the left. Let's take two more of these. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, twist right. Maybe your gaze even starts to come over right shoulder. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, twist left. One more on each side. And last one, in and out. Transitioning into your table pose, so allowing the hands to stack underneath the shoulders, knees below the hips. Starting with some cat and cow motion. So with that inhale, we're going to drop the chest, gaze up towards the sky, and with the exhale, curl and round as you press the floor away. Again, inhale is an arching and opening, and exhale is a curling and rounding. So using that breath to incorporate you through each movement, we're letting those openings that happen naturally just open your chest, throat, heart, spine, hips. When we come on to our table pose like this, it's a very primal uh, position to be in. This is where we first really learned how to move is through crawling on our hands and knees. And allowing this to turn a little bit more organic, perhaps rocking those hips from side to side. Maybe even taking some full pelvic bowl rotations in one direction. Or maybe it's staying in some semi-circles towards the back of your mat. Just take any organic movements here. This is your opportunity to kind of tap into the dialogue that happens between breath and sensation rather than going to the mind and looking for words to tell you what to do. Eventually this motion is gonna carry you down into a child's pose. So let those hips sink back. Knees can be as close or as far apart from each other as you like. 
arms reaching forward, or maybe they choose to reach behind you towards the heels. You can even place a block underneath the head. Let's breathe here for a moment. Showing your gratitude for this physical earth supporting you. And maybe just for a moment, taking any little stressful thought you're still kind of working with or any sort of tension and just imagine it as if it's turning into water and you're just letting that water seep into the earth just like the rain just being received one more breath here returning all the way back up into your table pose and then dropping that left forearm on to the ground. And we're gonna just rotate through that right leg a couple times. So the right knee can stay bent the entire time as you're circling it, or maybe it starts to extend and bend through that journey of those rotations. You might notice a little clicking in the hip. And just taking it nice and slow. You can take it in the opposite direction, letting it be as expansive or as small as you like. And then we're gonna kick right leg out to the right, let that right foot land and find some back and forth presses. So the right foot is extended out to the right and you're just kind of pressing those hips back and forth. You might even drop down onto the forearms here if that's okay for your uh, shoulders and wrists. Pause in any uh, kind of location. If you need a deeper stretch, maybe you let those hips sink back and you just hold for a breath. And keeping right foot where it is, we're gonna bring our weight back underneath the palms. Left palm plants, inhale, right fingertips sweep up to the sky. And with the exhale, just take a quick little thread of that right arm towards the left side of your mat. Inhale, reach the right fingertips back up, open up, and exhale, thread. One more here, inhale, sweep up, and exhale, thread. Right fingertips reach up to the sky one more time. And then with the exhale, right fingertips land. We're gonna pulse that right leg for uh, a couple reps here. So start to pick the right foot up off the ground. You have to use the hip flexor strength here and just pulse for five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful, bring that right knee back underneath you. Table pose, rock the hips side to side. We have a beautiful breeze this morning. We're so very lucky. It does get a little warm out here, so we'll take it. Dropping the right forearm to the ground this time and then creating some circles through the left leg. So letting that left knee bend and extend if you like throughout those rotations or keeping that knee bent the entire time. So we're getting some external and internal rotations here through the hips. Take it in both directions. And then eventually left leg kicks out towards the left. Let it land and take some back and forth presses. So this should feel really nice on um, even the hamstring area where the hamstring and the hip connects. Taking those mo movements, opening the chest when you open up towards the front and then sending those hips back. And again, you can pause in any sort of position if it feels really lovely and you wanna just like luxuriate in some movements. And then eventually bringing the weight back below your hands. Right hand plants, left fingertips reach up to the sky. Maybe the gaze follows. And your exhale is letting those left fingertips just drag across to the right side of your mat. Inhale, sweep it up. And exhale, thread it through. One more here. Inhale, reach. And exhale, thread. Finish it off by reaching those left fingertips back up to the sky. And then exhale, left hand plants. We're gonna take those pulses with left leg. So start to bring it up to a hover. Might be a little harder on one side. We'll pulse here for five, four, three, two, one. Left knee comes back underneath you, table pose. Find a nice flat back here. I want you to spread those fingers wide and kind of press the fingertips into the earth. This is how you grasp on the ground to make sure your wrists are supported. 
tucking those toes under and lifting the knees to just a hover so we can really start to explore the connection that resides within our abdominal muscles. So you should feel this almost like corset-like effect holding you in a nice flat back. Squeeze those quads here as well for five, four, three, two, one. Hips pull up and back, downward facing dog. Start to pedal your feet out here, presumably the first downward facing dog of the morning. So just take your time to kind of bend and extend through the knees, <sighs> bringing one heel down to the earth and then alternating the other heel up towards the sky. Taking these movements here. And if the wrists ever do become a little bit sensitive, you can always try coming on to fists. It's, it's a little different. You might not dig it that much, but give it a try. Starting to turn knees into some back and forth presses. So with the inhale, we're going to drop those knees to a hover. Find a bent knee dog as the hips pull up and back. And with the exhale, pressing yourself forward into a plank pose, but making sure those shoulders do not go past the wrists. So the inhale is a bent knee dog. Hips pull up and back. Knees press back. And exhale, plank pose. So the alternative is bringing those knees to the ground and finding some presses between a child's pose and a supported plank pose. Take these as slow or as fast as you like. The slower you go, the more you can pay attention to how the muscle, muscular structure is working. The faster you go, the more cardio, the more blood flow you got going. Let's take about two or so more. Use that breath. That breeze should be a reminder of that beautiful breath. Eventually coming into a full plank pose. Let's set this up. Keep a micro bend through those elbows. Heels press back, chest pulls forward just a touch. Chin is slightly tucked so that your gaze is towards the ground. Inhale. With the exhale, lowering just those knees to the ground and then using that stability in your core to slowly lower with the elbows pointing back. Inhale for a low cobra. Engage the feet, uh, shoelace sides of the feet into the ground. Press your chest up. Shoulders pulling towards one another. Gaze towards the ground. And release. Let's find one more low cobra. Inhale. Peel your way up. And exhale. Release. Making your way back to your table pose. And then tucking the toes under. Find your downward facing dog. So throughout class, we will be taking some chaturanga flows. If you ever need to take that supported chaturanga with the knees on the ground, please do so. You can always skip them all together, or you can add extra push-ups. With the inhale, let's bend the knees, gaze forward, prepare. With the exhale, walk or hop to the front of your mat, forward fold. Pausing in your forward fold for a moment, deep bend in the knees, shaking the head, yes and no. You might even consider bringing those elbows on top of the knees and kind of finding a nice supported little um, squat-like position almost. We want that lower back to be nice and released here. You can grab onto opposite elbows even and find a ragdoll. Kind of sway from side to side, transferring that stretch through the body. And again, shake the head yes and no. Release any tension being held within your jaw. Coming into a strong halfway lift by planting the fingertips on your shin, lifting the crown halfway, and exhale, release and fold. Inhale, press through the feet, slowly roll one vertebra at a time. Finish it off by circle, sweeping those arms up to the sky, gazing up towards the tree line. Mm. And with the exhale, pulling your hands towards your heart, ground down here, breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, circle sweep the arms, reach up to the sky. Exhale, hinging from the hips, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, hands plant, stepping or hopping back to your plank pose. We're back in our favorite position, our plank pose. We're pressing those heels back, chest pulls slightly forward, choosing to keep those knees lifted or drop it with your inhale. Exhale, slowly lower halfway or all the way if those knees are on the ground. Inhale, up dog or low cobra. If you're in an up dog, squeeze the glutes and quads. And exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. 
Inhale, right leg sweeps up to the sky. And with the exhale, just bend and extend a couple times. Maybe find some little circles through the hip or even opening up by letting that right heel drop over towards the left side of the mat. Reaching right leg back up to the sky. Square your hips on an inhale. And with the exhale, pull the knee in towards the chest. Hold. Inhale, re-sweep that right foot up. And exhale, knee to chest. Step to your runner's lunge. We'll start our runner lunge this morning by dropping that left knee to the ground and just finding some back and forth presses. You can have blocks underneath the hands here. We're just kind of warming up our hamstrings a little bit before finding a little bit more engagement. So stretching and strengthening really do go hand in hand. So even when we're in those really strong warriors, we're still getting a stretch, which is really the epitome of yoga right there. Eventually returning back to a proper runner's lunge, tucking left toes under, lifting that knee, pressing right foot into the ground, and then slowly lifting your chest up to your crescent lunge. In your crescent lunge, you might need to readjust those feet, make sure they are hip distance apart, a gentle bend through that back left knee so that pelvis can be tucked under just a touch. With the inhale, arms reach up, extend through your knees, and with the exhale, dip and twist to the right. Left arm pulls forward, right arm pulls back. Inhale, rise, and exhale, dip and twist. So what we're doing is we're building this dynamic tension through the legs as we twist and dip. Three more, inhale, lift, exhale, dip and twist. Here's two. And one. Holding in that dip and twist or turning it into a runner's lunge twist by letting the left fingertips drop to your block and keeping right hand extended up to the sky. So either finding that low runner's lunge or finding that dip and twist. Hold here for five, four, three, two, and one. One, we'll all meet back in our runner's lunge and then dial left heel down, cartwheel open to your warrior two. In your warrior two, take a moment to set this up. The right toes are towards the front of the mat and that back edge of the left foot is towards the back of your mat. Hips are open towards the side. You can even bring your palms and face them up towards the sky to kind of open up through your shoulders and heart. Breathe in breathe out. Inhale, flip right palm, reverse your warrior, and with the exhale, extend your warrior. Again, inhale to reverse, finding some dynamic flowing before holding a more sturdy posture, and exhale into side angle. Two more here, inhale to reverse, and exhale to extend, trying to keep that dynamic tension through the legs. Here's our last reverse warrior. And with the exhale, extended side angle. We're gonna hold here. Press through that back edge of the left foot. Very important. You might wanna bring that right forearm onto your thigh. You can go for a half bind or full bind like we have Karina over here in the pink top. Breathe in and out. Press those feet into the ground. This is a core uh, expression as well. So those rib cage, that right rib cage is kind of rotating over towards the left. Here's your last breath in and out. Inhale to reverse your warrior and with the exhale cartwheel hands down find your runner's lunge. Hands plant right foot steps back to meet left either in a plank pose or keep that right leg lifted in a three-legged plank will hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Here's your chaturanga lower to your degree Inhale, up dog or low cobra, and exhale, downward facing dog. Two breaths there. And just a friendly reminder, you can take a drink of water at any time. And if the sun is starting to creep into your little zone, you can always readjust. Inhale, left leg sweeps up to the sky. And with the exhale, just bend and extend the knee a couple times, maybe open and close the hip, letting that left heel drop over towards the right side of the room or field rather. 
With your next inhale, left toes up to the sky, square your hips. And with the exhale, pull left knee into the chest, hold. Inhale, re-extend. Exhale, knee to chest, step to your runner's lunge. Starting by dropping the right knee to the ground and finding those back and forth presses. Hands can be on blocks here. And if you do have any knee sensitivity and you don't want to drop that right knee to the ground, this can also be taken with both legs lifted. And I love this expression because we're not only are we accessing through the left hamstring, but as we press those hips forward, now we're getting into that right hip flexor. Take one or so more. And then return back into that runner's lunge. So re-bend through that uh, left knee. Tuck right toes under, lift the right knee up. Check for a moment, make sure those feet are hip distance apart. And then use your core connection to press yourself up to your crescent lunge. So there's a gentle bend to that back right knee this time to make sure that hip is right below the shoulder. Pressing through left foot into the ground with a bent knee. With the inhale, rise, extended crescent lunge. And with the exhale, dip and twist to the left. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, dip and twist. Five more. Inhale, extend. Exhale, dip. We're creating that dynamic tension through the legs with each dip. Exhale. I lost count. Here's two more. And with your last one, we're going to either hold in that dip twist in a high crescent twist or start to let those right fingertips come down towards your mat so we're kind of creating a little bit of a different weight distribution here in a runner's lunge twist or a high crescent lunge twist hold for five four three two one we're all going to meet back in our runner's lunge so let those hands come back down Dial right heel down and cartwheel open to your warrior two on the other side. Beautiful. So this time the left toes are forward. There's a bend in that left knee. But make sure that that left knee is not going past the ankle. We want to keep it nice and stacked there. Opening your heart up towards the, I guess, the side of the field that has these wonderful, beautiful backyards. Maybe the palms flip to reach the sky. Inhale to reverse your warrior. And with the exhale, extend your warrior. We'll find about three more. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extend. Notice how the lower body is uh, dynamically pressing into the ground, where upper body is dynamically flowing. The next time you come into that side angle, hold here. Now check in with your hips. Notice if those hips are pressing back. We want to try to keep those hips stacked below you. And that left rib cage is kind of rotating to face the houses. So rather than letting your body kind of turn to face left toes, we want your body, your upper body to open up towards the side. Press through that outer right edge of your foot. Maybe finding a half bind or full bind. Find the best expression of your side angle pose for this last inhale. And exhale. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And with the exhale, cartwheel those hands down to your runner's lunge. Hands plant and left foot steps back to meet right or keep that left leg extended. Three-legged plank for five, four. Squeeze the abdominals and quads. Three, two, one. Find that chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or low cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog yogi's choice here to stay in your down dog or maybe drop those knees to the ground towel off grab a drink kind of reset a little bit here before continuing and it's such a beautiful day it's the highlight of the weekend i believe even though yesterday it was really beautiful as well we'll all meet our downward facing dog when you're ready Anybody have a balancing posture they're dying to do? Any suggestions? Now that I actually have people here. <laughs> Half moon? Is that what you said, Mary Beth? Yep. Half moon, let's do it. All right, right toes reach up to the sky. 
and with the exhale, pull right knee into your chest, step to your runner's lunge. Let's set up our balancing half moon by taking a warrior three pose. So I want you to start by coming into a hover. So pull those fingertips back, keep that chest lifted. It's almost like your crown is reaching forward as the fingers and left heel is pressing back. Now from here, you can choose to stay here or maybe you take flight through the left toe starting to pick up off the ground. You kind of have to hinge a little bit more forward. If balance is challenging for you, you might interlace the hands on right thigh and kind of use that as a shelf to press your hands into the thigh and thigh presses into the hands. Now balancing on the earth is a lot different than balancing on hardwood, so be kind to yourself. This is challenging. Left foot is flexed, breathe in and out. Two more. Stay with it, keep that chest lifted, left hip is dropped down, here's your last breath. Landing back into your hover, so left toes slowly plant back on the ground. Keeping the right arm reaching back, left arm pulls forward, thunderbolt position. Hold here, feel that burn through the right leg, that's okay you guys, we're strengthening here. For three, two, one, cartwheel open to your warrior two, facing the large side of the field. From here, inhale, reach the arms up to the sky, straighten right leg, and with the exhale, return back to your warrior two, arms open in a T. Inhale, reach up, and exhale, warrior. One more. Holding in your warrior two, and if you have a block, I want you to take that block about six inches in front of right toes. If you don't have a block, if you have a nice sturdy water bottle, that works too. We're going to come into our balancing half moon by starting to bring those right fingertips towards your block or prop and start to lift that left leg up. Keep that left foot flexed so that you're really engaging through the entire leg here. You'll notice balance is a lot more challenging when we're on the grass. In order to really solidify, that right foot needs to be pressing into the earth. Beautiful job, Jeff. That looks amazing. We got a great balancing half moon for you guys. Keep those hips open. Here's your last three, two, one. Land back in your warrior two. Lengthen right leg. Turn the toes in. Find a wide-legged uh, expression through the legs. Arms open up into a T. Maybe you gaze up to the clouds. And with the exhale, hinge forward with control. Find your wide-legged forward fold. From here, take any little wiggles through the hips. Notice how right side of the body and left side of the body feel a little uneven. We need to do that all on the left side. You might even kind of pulse in and out of some skandasanas, dropping the right hip down and then the left hip down taking any little movements here. We'll be here for about three more breaths. So this is really your area for exploration. If you like any headstands or inversions or anything funky, feel free. It's actually kind of nice to um, use the grass as a little bit of a cushion. Reminder to keep yourself nice and safe wherever you do go. Walking the hands back over towards right foot, coming back to that runner's lunge. Hands plant, and then right foot sweeps all the way up and back for a three-legged dog. Open your hip here by bending the knee and letting that right heel kind of drop over towards the general area of the left side of the field. Maybe you take a flip dog here and letting that right foot drop towards the left side of the mat and really press those hips up to the sky. And with the exhale, bend through the knees, come back to that three-legged dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. Choosing to stay in your downward facing dog or find a chaturanga by bending the knees to a bent knee dog. Exhale to your plank pose. Breathe in to prepare. And exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or low cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, left leg sweeps up to the sky. 
With the exhale, pull left knee in towards the chest, step to your runner's lunge. Make sure those feet are hip distance apart before coming into your hover by pressing left heel into the ground and slowly starting to pick that chest up. Arms pull back with the palms facing down. The more you press that left foot and squeeze left glute, the stronger you become. Maybe you take flight here by letting those right toes start to lift up off the ground. You have to pull your chest a little bit more forward. Remember, if you're having a challenging time with balance, you can always interlace the hands on left thigh and use that as a little shelf to press some of your weight on. Keep that right foot flexed. Notice if the right hip is trying to open and try to dial it down to meet left hip. Three, two, one. Slowly return back to that runner's lunge hover. Let the right toes land. Right arm pulls forward, left arm pulls back, thunderbolt position for five, four, feel that burn, stay with it, here's three, two, one, dial right heel down, open up warrior two. Inhale, fingertips up overhead, lengthen through left leg, and with the exhale, warrior two. Inhale, hands reach up overhead, lengthen left leg. Exhale, warrior two. One more time, rise and warrior. Making sure that block is where it needs to be, about six inches in front of left toes for our balancing half moon. Bring your left fingertips on your prop as you lift the right leg up towards the sky. Keep that foot in line with the hip here. Chest is open towards the houses. Those hips are open towards the houses. If you flex that right foot, this becomes a lot stronger and easier for balance. Hold for five, four, stick with the challenge. Here's three, two, one. Return back to that warrior two. Lengthen left leg, turn the toes in, find a wide-legged position, either choosing to open up your arms into a T, or maybe you bring those hands behind the lower back, interlace them, and open your chest, and then hinge forward. If you do have the hands interlocked behind the back, rather than letting those knuckles kind of drop behind the head, press those knuckles up to the sky. That's where we're actually accessing the opening through the heart. We'll be here for about six or so breaths. So explore here. You can release that grip at any point if it's not working for you. You can also utilize a little towel and kind of grasp onto your towel rather than uh, interlacing the hands. Notice how this pose really complements those really difficult balancing half moons. It's really nice to kind of let your blood flow kind of regulate back down, take a couple nice deep breaths. Beautiful, Jeff. And any little extra flair you got, you can always go for it if you're feeling it. Here's our last two. If you are in something a little bit more intense, take your time and stay as long as you like. Walking the hands over towards left foot, coming back to your runner's lunge, hands plant. Left foot reaches all the way up into a three-legged dog open up your hip and maybe you take that flip dog by bending through right knee letting left toes land to the right side of your mat opening your chest and heart up to the sky press those hips up to come out of it exhale bend through the knees return back to your three-legged dog and exhale downward facing dog inhale bend the knees gaze forward and exhale walk or hop to the front of your mat forward fold Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Inhale, press through the feet, start to reach those arms up to the sky, and exhale, hands to heart. Now, the ground is a little bumpy, so if you need to kind of walk <laughs> on your mat to make sure you find a location where it's a little bit more flat, we're gonna come into our tree pose. So let's start by placing that right foot into the ground, nice and sturdy. You should feel that kind of start to build a little bit of dynamic tension through the leg. And then we'll start by letting those left toes either land on your mat and just simply open up that hip. That's destination number one. Or you can start to creep that left foot on the right leg. Just make sure we avoid pressing the left foot on your knee. Now the power of this pose is having that right 
leg be as strong as a tree trunk in the ground. And that left foot is gonna press into right leg. So that's why that right leg needs to be really strong. There's this really intense pressing of foot into leg and leg pressing into foot. Arms can start to explore some movement if you choose. And I can barely tell the difference between you and the trees around us. Notice the stillness within your tree and the calm energy building. Energy rising up to your leaves, maybe even gazing up to your favorite tree in front of you. And slowly starting to come out of it by letting that left foot land next to right in a mountain pose. Taking it to the other side. So that left foot is gonna press into the ground, start to build that dynamic tension through the left leg. And then bring right toes to the mat. Maybe this is where you start and that knee just opens up to the right. Or maybe you start to creep that right foot somewhere on left leg that isn't the left knee. You might even use that right hand to kind of put the foot where you need it. Find that lock in left leg being as sturdy as that tree trunk and right foot pressing into that strong tree trunk. Once you find that lock, your balance becomes a little bit more easy and maybe you can start to play around with some arm movement. Let's hold here in stillness and quiet. Just kind of listen to the birds. Keep your breath moving. and then release out of this. You can empty coat sleeve, letting the arms open into a T and just kind of swing from side to side. Maybe shake the legs out, shake the wrist, even a little bounce up and down. And then if you are not at the top of your mat, walk yourself to the top of your mat. Inhale, arms sweep up to the sky. Exhale, hinging from the hips, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, hands plant, stepping or hopping back to your plank pose. Dropping down onto your forearm plank. So letting the forearms come to the ground, palms open to the earth. You can always drop those knees to the ground here. Notice how those hips want to stay lifted and try to bring those hips in line with the shoulders. It helps if you press the heels back and pull the chest forward here for 10, 9, 8. Stay with this challenge. 7, Six, five, four, we're there. Three, two, one. Lower those knees and hips to the ground. Find your Sphinx pose. So we're using the forearms on the earth to kind of pull apart the abdominal muscles for a nice stretch. Keep that chin slightly tucked so that the neck is a natural expression of the spine. Squeeze your glutes just a touch to kind of keep active through the lower back. And then releasing out of this pose. I like to bring the forearms underneath the head and just bend the knees and windshield wiper legs side to side just to start. Feeling a little bit of the heartbeat in the earth. And then we'll come into a quad stretch by letting the right forearm come underneath the head as a pillow or you can use it to kind of prop your chest up a little bit. Grab on to left foot or ankle with a bent left knee. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that left knee reach for the back of your mat and provide yourself just enough energy of kind of kicking into left hand and left hand pulling that leg uh, foot back towards the body. And I say just enough because we're not looking for like a half bow pose here. What we're looking for is a nice opening through the left quad. In order to do that, we do need a little bit of activity, but this is a pretty restorative pose. Breathe in and out. Sometimes I like to take a block underneath left quad and kind of have a little bit more of a deeper stretch. One more breath here. And then lengthening left leg back down your mat. We'll switch it out. So left forearm comes underneath the body for either a pillow or a little support. Bend right foot or, uh, ankle, excuse me, bend right knee, grab foot or ankle. Lengthen that right knee to the back of your mat and then provide yourself again with enough energy where you can access a nice long quad. So 
That means you're gently kicking into the hand and hand is gently pulling that foot back towards the body. We'll find five breaths. If you liked that block variation, you can put it back underneath the left quad or right quad. And then coming out of it, lengthening both legs, planting the hands alongside of you, and then pressing your way into your table pose. Hands plant, find a nice flat back, and then send, right, send the right toes behind you with the toes on the ground to start, and just take a couple back and forth presses here, accessing through the calf and the arch of the foot. And then coming back to center, keeping the, uh, reach the right toes up off the ground, but keep the heel in line with the hip. Flex your right foot. We're gonna go for an extended table. So either choosing to stay here or perhaps those left fingertips reach forward for a full extended table. Inhale is a lengthening. Exhale, pulling left knee and right, uh, excuse me, right knee and left elbow towards the midline. Inhale, re-extend, open, squeeze right glute. Exhale, curl using your abdominal muscles. Here's five more. Four. Three. Two, and one. Inhale, extend, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Left hand plants, right knee plants, rock those hips side to side, maybe shake out the wrists. And then we'll find it to the other side. So flat back. Left toes extend behind you. Keep the toes on the earth to start and find those back and forth presses. Should feel really nice to get a little movement through that calf. Coming back to center, start to pick the left toes up off the ground, but keep the left heel in line with the hip, flexed foot, squeezing through left glute. Maybe the right arm extends forward. Your inhale is a lengthening. Exhale, pulling knee and elbow towards the chest. Inhale, extend, squeeze left glute. Exhale, knee and elbow. Here's five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, extended table, hold five, squeeze four, Three, two, and one. Come back into your table pose and then sink those hips back, child's pose. And that is the end of our challenging postures. From here on out, some nice, lovely, deep stretches. We'll come into our uh, pigeon pose next. So if you prefer to take a reclined pigeon, you can come onto your backs. If you are looking for a prone pigeon, we'll go together by tucking the toes under, lifting the hips up and back, downward facing dog, taking any little wiggles that you may need here before extending right leg up to the sky, and then pulling right knee towards right wrist and landing in your prone pigeon. So most importantly, we want that right thigh to be parallel to the long edge of your mat. And then from there, you can play around with utilizing a block underneath right glute for a little support or even opening up left knee out to the left. So if you don't have a block or a prop, opening that left knee out to the left is a really great expression that you can take without any sort of prop. Now in your pigeon pose, you can keep that chest lifted for a couple of breaths, maybe the entire time or hinge forward. I like to take a block underneath my head as a little support here. Let's enjoy that breeze as it comes through. Let it just roll over your back, through your hair. <sighs> that breeze is a beautiful reminder for a cleansing breath whenever you need. And even within your static posture, you can even find some gentle swaying of the hips side to side or shaking of the head, yes and no. 
opening and closing your jaw. Finding two more breaths here. To come out of this, start to press yourself up, tuck left toes under, and find your downward facing dog. Again, taking any little wiggles here that you may need. Eventually, left leg reaches up to the sky and exhale, left knee pulls towards left wrist, finding your prone pigeon. Make sure that that left thigh is parallel to the long edge of the mat. And then from there, you can play around with any modifications or expressions that you like. So maybe a block underneath the left hip, perhaps just opening that right knee out to the right, coming into a more supported position. Wherever you are, make it yours. Know that your body is fluid and can always find movement. If you are in a prone position, maybe even bringing your palms on the actual grass and just kind of feeling that energy transfer, transfer from hands into earth. So this cool thing that I've been doing a little bit of research on is actually called grounding. And basically the ground is charged with negative electrons and our bodies often have a lot of positive electrons, so we're a little unbalanced. So by bringing your physical body, your skin, onto the earth, we're trading our positive electrons for some negative electrons and balancing back out. And if you're curious about that, it's a book called Earthing. I can get the author's name for you guys. So there's these little, little, like, pockets of magic that we can access from bringing our bodies onto the earth. Let's slowly start to pick ourselves up. Hands plant. Right toes tuck under. You can extend back into your downward facing dog for a moment. And then we'll come onto our backs. So take your time to arrive. When you get there, let yourself find a nice full body stretch. Maybe you find a little sip of water before accessing your uh, reclined position. And um, for those of you who uh, arrived a little bit closer to the beginning of class, we have some bug spray here. So if you, you know, want to spray your mat or the edges of your mat with a little bit of bug spray, you can always grab that as well. When you're in a reclined position, take a moment in that nice full body stretch and then pull the knees into the chest. Give yourself a big squeeze, maybe a little swaying side to side to feel the entire back pressing on the earth. And then with right knee pull, with right knee pulled into the chest, lengthen left leg down your mat. Finding a wind relieving pose, we're massaging the internal organs by squeezing that right knee. We're creating a little bit of constriction of blood flow. And whenever we kind of constrict the blood flow, that means when we exit out of the pose, there's going to be a rush of new nutrient blood through that location of the body. Let's turn this into our reclining twist by letting that right leg kind of drape over towards the left. Use any blocks here underneath right knee, or maybe you choose to bend both knees and bring a block sandwiched in between the knees. Whatever you like here, we'll be here for three breaths. Coming back to center, both knees pull in to the chest for another squeeze. And then keeping left knee pulled into the chest, lengthening right leg down your mat, wind relieving pose. So now we're massaging the different side of the body, constricting a little bit of blood flow to that left hip.
Turning this into your twist by letting that left leg cross over towards the right. And again, taking any modification on your twist that you like. <clears throat> a beautiful reminder that the outside world still continues to exist but on this little field we've created this little container that's just ours eventually coming out of your twist and finding any last pose or expression of movement before coming into your final resting pose. Take your time. Take the next three or four breaths to do what you got to do before coming into your final resting position. <clears throat> Once you're in your final resting pose, take a nice deep breath in and out. Let everything rest. Enjoy the simplicity of this very moment we are experiencing. <clears throat> Let the energy of being amongst other yogis just fill your soul. <clears throat> I want to be free, so free. Like a feather blowing through the breeze Like a bird or a tree Like a dolphin in the sea There is no high No low there is nowhere else to go except inside within your heart and be just who you are Pachamama I'm coming home to the Pachamama, I'm coming home to the place where I belong. Pachamama, I'm coming home to the place where I belong.
Taking a deep breath in and letting it go. Letting your breath slowly start to expand with each inhale. Let that breeze just soothe your soul. Taking the next five or so breaths to slowly come into a seated position once again. Taking any movements, maybe starting them at the fingers and toes. Maybe pulling the knees into the chest, giving yourself another squeeze. Taking any last little movements here before returning. Once you've arrived, bringing your hands either over heart or bringing the palms together at heart center. <clears throat> Taking this moment in reverence for this mysterious universe, bringing us here together today, being a part of each other's journey. And I think we all have a new understanding of how lucky we are to be experiencing this practice, both physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. We'll seal our class with the sound of Om, letting our vibration become one, starting with the cleansing breath, breathe in and out. And for Om, inhale. Oh. With a big smile on my face and a big warm heart, I say namaste and bow to you. The great spirit within me bows to the great spirit within all of you guys. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you guys all so much. You are amazing. It's not easy doing your practice out here. Oh, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, it definitely has its own little challenges, which are great. Um, the heat is nice, right? We love a hot yoga class, so we'll take it. Um, Please continue coming to these classes when you can. We have this entire field to ourselves from 9 to 10 a.m. So we really look forward to seeing you guys next time. Okay? Yeah. Thank you, guys. And uh, last little reminder, too, uh, check out the newsletter that we sent out. It should be um, in your email. If you don't have it in your email, you can check it out on Facebook. We posted it there as well. Just has a bunch of guidelines of what to expect when we do open on Tuesday for our 4 p.m. Bikram class led by Amy. All right, you guys? Thank you. So we're here every morning at 9. Every morning at 9. Please come during the week. If you're free. Thank you. Oh, I forgot about Facebook. All right, bye Facebook. <laughs>